Hello and welcome to our presentation on safeguarding motorcyclists, where we've been trialling new prime road markings for casualty reduction. My name is Alex Stedman and together with David McKenzie, we appreciate this opportunity to talk to you and give you an update on some of the work that we've been conducting through 2020 into casualty reduction for motorcyclists. The work is in collaboration with Transport Scotland, Bear Scotland and Open Road Simulation. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Road Safety GB and the organisers of the Power Two Wheeler Riders Conference for this invitation to speak to you. Our presentation takes about 15 minutes and we hope you enjoy it. If you managed to get out much over the summer last year and found yourself up in the West Highlands of Scotland, you may have noticed road signs and road markings like the ones on the slide here. These road signs and road markings are part of a new research programme into rider behaviour and a number of sites across the West Highlands were identified for trials to take place through 2020. These road signs and road markings are part of a new approach to casualty reduction for motorcyclists. In Scotland, motorcyclists account for just over 2% of all vehicles registered on the road. However, they also represent over 14% of those who are killed or seriously injured on Scottish roads. Now, this isn't a problem that's specifically unique to Scotland. We see this pattern around the world, where motorcyclists are typically a small number of the road users, but are represented as a disproportionately high number of victims in road traffic collisions and accidents. This makes motorcyclists a particularly vulnerable road user group. The Scottish Road Safety Framework has identified motorcyclists as a priority focus area, and the Strategic Road Safety Plan includes a specific action to further develop and implement road safety measures specifically for motorcyclists, as well as supporting education campaigns where appropriate. Now we know that motorcyclists are particularly difficult to reach and engage with. We're always looking for new and innovative ways to enhance rider safety on the road. We also know that traditional methods have had limited impact at times because riders get used to the roadside messaging they become habituated to the measures which are intended to keep them safe. With the aim of trying to find new and innovative ways of engaging with riders, throughout 2020, we've been developing the concept of PRIMES. PRIMES stands for Perceptual Rider Information for Maximising Expertise and Enjoyment. And what we're doing with this is we're borrowing very much from the principles of nudge psychology to influence rider behaviour in a positive way. We're taking very much a user-centred approach to our work by developing solutions for motorcyclists through the engagement and participation of motorcyclists themselves. In this way, we're aiming to develop a set of road markings that help riders on the approach to demanding bends. And we've developed it very much as a toolkit that riders can use and adapt to their everyday riding depending on the conditions they're riding in. So hopefully in this way, it won't be something that they become habituated to but something which they use as part of their usual riding. In the picture on the right, you can see a gateway marking. This has been trialled through 2020, and it's designed to help riders judge their speed, position and braking before a demanding bend. As part of the main research programme, a number of pilot trial sites were identified across the region. This was in order to test out the research methodology and data analysis. Pilot trials were conducted on the A828, the A82 and the A85 because these are popular roads with motorcyclists in the region. They will use these roads if they're riding out towards Glencoe and Fort William or over towards Oban or maybe returning back towards Tyndrum and Crane Larrick. The image on the right hand side illustrates where the four trial sites were positioned. Appin House was over on the west side, near the side of Loch Linney. King's House was up towards Glencoe. And both Loch Lubair and Rob Roy's dip were on the A85, heading back towards Stirling. The sites represented a mix of left and right hand bends. And this meant that we could trial the prime road markings in a number of different bend orientations. Also, the bends had very different characteristics so it gave us the opportunity to test out the primes across a number of different areas. 
so that we could analyze any potential changes in rider behavior. We collected data before and after the prime road markings were installed. We captured data using small cameras at the roadside, the same as in the picture on the right hand side of the slide. We captured data for rider speed, position and braking as they approached a particular bend. And we ran the trials throughout the summer of 2020 on weekends when motorcyclists were most active on the roads. Across all the sites, we observed nearly 13,000 motorcyclists. Of these, just over 4,000, or almost a third, were classified as lead motorcyclists and therefore analysed in more detail. We also observed just over 1,400, or just over 10% of motorcyclists carrying a passenger. And over 8,000, or almost two thirds of motorcycles were classified as being part of a group. So the general profile of motorcyclists in this area is that they are riding alone and not carrying a passenger, but they are still riding as part of a group with other riders. And this reinforces the social dimension to motorcycling in this area. At Appin House on the A828, two bends were identified for trials during 2020. One was a northbound bend and one was a southbound bend, and they're illustrated on the right hand side of the slide for you. The northbound bend was a sharp left-hand bend at the end of a series of other bends going downhill. So this made it a particularly difficult and technically demanding piece of road for motorcyclists to negotiate. The southbound bend came at the end of a long straight where riders could potentially take excess speed into a sharp left-hand bend. At King's House on the A82 up near Glencoe, the same bend was used in two different directions, both northbound and southbound. And again, images are shown on the right-hand side of the slide for you. The northbound bend was a sweeping right-hand bend up the valley. And this is a very fast stretch of road, but care is needed because as you go around the bend, there is a popular stopping point where vehicles may turn off or turn onto the road at short notice. In the southbound direction, the road is a sweeping left-hander down the valley and again care is needed on this far stretch of road near that popular stopping point. At Loch Lubert on the A85 the same bend was used in the eastbound and westbound direction. In the eastbound direction this was a sharp left-hand bend on a narrow stretch of road with walls on either side. In the westbound direction this was a sharp right-hand bend again on the same narrow stretch of road with walls on both sides. Particular care was needed along this stretch of road because of the limited views around the bends and also the effects of sunlight and shade on the road. And also the road could remain damp throughout the day. At Rob Roy's dip on the A85, two bends were identified in the eastbound direction. The first bend was a sharp right-hand bend on the approach to the rise before the dip. The second bend was a sweeping left-hand bend going into the dip and out the other side. These bends were particularly challenging because of the limited view through the bends and also the changes in geometry and camber through those bends. In the other direction at Rob Roy's dip were two westbound bends. The first bend was a sweeping right hand bend into the dip and out the other side. The second bend was a tight left hand bend on the approach to the rise out of the dip. For the similar reasons to the eastbound bends, these bends were challenging because of the limited viewpoints through the bends and the changes in the camber of the road. Throughout the trials, we observed almost 13,000 motorcyclists and over 4,000 of these were classified as lead motorcyclists. And that meant we could do much more detailed analyses in terms of their speed, position and braking to understand if there was any influence in terms of using the prime road markings on rider behavior. We found statistically significant results for speed on four of the bends across three of the sites. And this was for a mixture of right and left hand bends. So we have some early evidence that primes influence speed on both left and right hand bends. Across all the locations, we found statistically significant results for the position of riders at the point of the final prime road marking. And this provides strong evidence that primes influence rider position across a range of left and right hand bends. 
We also found significant results for position at the apex of the bend at seven of the 10 locations. So this provides further evidence that rider position is influenced by the prime road markings, not just at the start of the bend, but also as riders travel through the bend itself. We didn't find much in the way of braking behavior, as this was not a high incidence activity. We did find re significant results for the left and right hand bends at Loch Bear, which if you remember, is that very narrow tight section of road. Across eight of the 10 locations, we also found significant results for the use of primes, which illustrated that with the primes were there, riders would use them. Another interesting aspect of the data was that we could look at motorcycle distributions at different locations throughout the day. As we can see here, more motorcycles were present at this location earlier in the day. And at this site, more motorcyclists were present later in the day. And we can consider the distribution of motorcyclists across the network during the time that we were in the trials. And we can see that depending on the route that people took and the time of day that they were riding, the distributions across different areas of the network were shaped in different ways. As we all know, 2020 was an extremely challenging year for a number of reasons, but we feel we've been able to make good progress. We initially set out to run pilot trials at only one site, but Transport Scotland were able to extend this to the sites that we've included in this presentation. We were able to observe almost 13,000 motorcyclists, and as far as we know, that makes it the biggest study of its kind in Scotland, if not the UK, and we feel particularly proud of that. The pilot trials have also allowed us to test out our research approach and methodology, and also our data analysis for the massive amounts of data that we collected. And we feel that we've got something that is robust and fit for purpose going forwards. You may have noticed that the pictures you've seen so far in this presentation show motorcyclists riding on nice sunny days. And we were extremely lucky that most of the time we had good weather. However, we did have the odd bout of bad weather and that meant that we could test our equipment in very hostile conditions. Overall, we found strong evidence for a range of beneficial effects that the prime road markings have on rider behavior. But equally, we've also not found any detrimental effects of the prime road markings on rider behavior. With the work that we've done so far and the results we've found to date, we feel we're in a good position to move forwards. Transport Scotland has been successful in being awarded funding by the Road Safety Trust to continue this work through 2021 and 2022. And this means that we can do more work to build up the evidence base for the potential effects of prime road markings on rider behavior. Ultimately, our goals are to reduce motorcycle casualties on the roads. We also hope that if further evidence supports the use of primes on rider behavior, then we have the basis for setting forward a new approach to rider safety. And ultimately, we would want to put together guidelines for installing primes in other locations so that other people can use them in other areas to support rider safety. Thank you for your time and for this opportunity to update you on the work that we've conducted through 2020. We very much hope we get further opportunities to update you in the future as the work progresses. If you have any questions about the presentation or the results that we've got to date, by all means contact myself or David McKenzie at Transport Scotland and we'll do our very best to help you. Thank you once again and enjoy the rest of the conference.